On this episode of Inspiration Nation, we finally got some much needed suspension upgrades for the budget E46 track car. Now, we did splurge a little bit thanks to our sponsor Vena B Salon and the guys at TMI Performance. We were able to hook us up with some D2 coilovers. First off, we got all our brackets, tools, and adjusters. See what kind of, did we get any stickers? Cause you know that's the main part of new race car parts. Stickers. What? Real carbon fiber sticker. We're gonna have to throw that on the car. Ooh. So these are super adjustable. Not only do you get your ride height adjustment, your spring dampening adjustment and your rebound adjustment up in the top with those cool little cool little purple adjusters you also get a camber adjustment these are really nice extremely high quality there's only one thing left to do let's get them on the car now before you get started the tools you're going to need for this project is a couple of impact guns if you have them wrenches with the correct size of 18 17 16 13, a 10, and an 8 millimeter wrench. You'll also need a 12 millimeter Allen wrench, a couple of clip tools for your clips in the trunk, the supplied wrenches for the coilovers themselves, and a hammer and punch with some anti seats. Now before we tear anything down, we want to make sure we check our ride height in the front and the rear so that we know where we are when we're going to set our adjustable coilovers underneath the car. In the front, we're looking at about 26 and a half inches. And now we're gonna do the same and get the measurement for the rear. Now we're going from the floor right up through the center of the wheel to the bottom of the fender well. And we're showing right at 25 and three quarters of an inch. Now the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get the car up in the air and get the jack stands underneath it for safety. Now you're gonna take your 17 millimeter and an impact or a wrench, get the wheel off so you can get to all the good stuff. Seeing that we've got the wheel off and we're examining our eBay rotors that we installed because we're balling on a budget, we've noticed that three good days on the track these rotors are already cracked. Ooh, look at that one. The first thing you're going to do is undo the sway bar link arms. If you undo it from both sides, it makes it easier. So we've already undone the passenger side. Now we're going to take a 16 millimeter and undo the sway of our link arms. The next thing you're going to want to do is take an 18 millimeter and undo the spindle bolt that actually holds the strut in place. For that we're going to use our trusty dusty impact gun. And if you're lucky, it just falls out like that. Sometimes they can seize up and you got to whack them with a hammer, but this one luckily fell right out. It's always good to have something under the A-frame to support the spindle so it doesn't sag and pull your brake lines and ABS lines tight. Once you have all the stuff loose on the bottom, you're going to come to the top with a 13 millimeter and undo the top three bolts. Don't lose these because you're going to be reusing the hardware. And sometimes you're going to have to take a 16 millimeter and go on and remove your caliper to give you just a little bit more wiggle room on the spindle. Didn't have to do it on the passenger side, but I'm having to do it on the driver. So now you can see 
the old strut and the new coilover. And we are wanting stock ride height. So roughly, we've got to make this one pretty much this size. And the reason why we're staying stockish ride height is honestly it makes it easier for us to get it on and off the trailer for the track. And there's really not that much of a significant handling difference between the inch or so that normal people would lower. So we try to stay around a stock ride height. And how you would adjust your ride height is by turning this bad boy. Because this is the only section that actually sets inside the spindle. And it's a lot of measuring and up and down on the car because once you get it set, you can actually turn the coil over inside on itself. Or at least that's what I did on the other side. And then you just set all your locking rings to make sure it doesn't move while you're out playing with your toy. We got a long ways to go. First thing we're gonna do is hang the coil over from the top. That way we can get everything brought up to it from the bottom. Pretty sure there's a torque spec you're supposed to use, but a quick ugga, almost a dugga, you should be good. No, I'm just playing. Go back and check all your torque specs and make sure they're what they're supposed to be. Now that you've got the coilover hanging from the top, take their supplied wrenches and put some spring tension on there. It varies depending on your driving and application you're gonna use. So what we set ours to will not necessarily be what you set yours to. Now it's time to bring the spindle and the lower A-frame up to the coilover. It helps to keep one of these scissor jacks around the shop. They work great for this application. The D2 coilover does have lineup pins that slip down in the back groove of the spindle. So make sure you got that lined up properly. Once you have the coilover seated in the spindle, reinstall your 18 millimeter bolt. It's a good idea put some anti-seize on these bolts so they don't get stuck. This one was a little stuck. Did not want to come out. And be careful with the anti-seize. You'll end up looking like the Tin Man if you don't watch out. And now that we've got our brake rotor and caliper reinstalled, it's time to put on the sway bar link. Now that we're reinstalling the tire and wheel, we can take a look at our general G-Max AS05 tires. Considering we've got about 300 miles on a road course with them, they've performed really well. But near the 300 mile mark, they start to really start losing the traction. So uh, great tires for autocross, not really the greatest for longevity on a road course, but still a really good tire. As you can see, the way the rubber has been melted and rolled all towards the center of the car. Still got a lot of tread wear and it'll do great on the street. Now that we've got the front installed at the proper ride height, we're going to jack the car back up and start on the rear. Now that we've got the wheel out of the way, you can tell that the rear suspension is slightly different, meaning that there is a spring separate from
from the shock. So what we're gonna do now is remove the shock and the spring. And once we undo the shock from down here, we're gonna have to get in the trunk and pull the interior panels out and get to the top of the shock. And you're gonna need an 18 millimeter socket to remove the bottom bolt in your shock. There's a million ways to do this, and we figure we're gonna try first with an old pry bar and staying out of the way. That's pretty simple. A lot of times they can be under some crazy pressure, but we luckily didn't have that problem. Now it's time to go to the trunk and undo the top of the shock. And when you come around to the trunk, you're gonna to wanna to pull your seat latch, which is located right there. Push your rear seat down so that you can get this interior panel out. Now we are not reinstalling this, so you're gonna to wanna to be a lot more gentle than we are. Hashtag race car. Now once you got the seat down, you wanna grab this side piece and give it a little pull. pretty much comes right out. There's one clip here and there's a little slip in here. And now you can get to the clips that are right here. Ooh. Weight reduction. I assume to be like a six disc CD changer tray. I'm not real sure. You guys know I don't really do BMWs. What the hell is that? Well, while we're back here, we're gonna get rid of all this factory stereo compartment. Then you're gonna need your trusty clip tool again. Weight reduction. Now, it looks like we got some, I'd say, 8 millimeter screws. Once you have all that stuff out of the way, all you got left is this very brittle, sound deadening insulation stuff that's going to break apart on you. Now we're going to go on and get all this stuff out because it can be a fire hazard. Now you're going to take a 13 millimeter socket and a ratchet to get the top bolts out. And you know you've got the nut all the way off when the shock clearly falls to the ground. And I'm almost certain these shocks have seen better days because they're not really <laughs> they're not really strong. A little public service announcement: before you leave your shop, make sure you turn your snap-on ratchets off. Nobody likes a dead ratchet when you get into work in the morning. Now it's time to reinstall the new coilover, but. You're gonna need an assistant to cram it up in the hole while you put the nuts on the top. And we just discovered that you don't need two people. You can actually give it a reach around. And you have to make sure you get a ratchet that's 10 miles too long for the job too. That's part of the whole thing. You're gonna need a 12 millimeter Allen wrench so that you can attach the spring perch. And the spring perch is gonna sit right there. And before you stick the bolt in, make sure you put some anti seize on there. Now 
Kind of directions it. I didn't see where it said reuse the top pad, but we're gonna reuse it because I feel like it will squeak. So. Reinstall. Oh, oh, wrong way. And reinstall bolt. And we're only putting three lug nuts on because we're going to set the car on the ground and check ride height. More than likely, we're going to have to jack the car back up, pull the wheel off, and adjust ride height. So now we haven't cinched anything down yet because we're still adjusting ride height and all. And you can actually jack the car up a little bit and reach up and grab the threaded portion of the shock in the rear and turn it to adjust your ride height if you don't cinch it down. The only kicker is once you get it set where you need it set, then you're gonna jack the car up, pull the wheel off, and then you're gonna cinch down the locking nuts. Now after you take all the time to jack the car up and get all your ride height and spring dampening and everything set, you're gonna go around the car, pull the wheels off, and make sure you cinch everything you can use the supplied wrenches and then just give it a little tap with a hammer and a punch. Don't get overzealous because you can mess up the threads, but it's always good to just put that little tink tink to it. Now that we got all the coilovers on the car, there's one thing left to do. Let's throw the sticker on. And there you have it guys, a general idea of what you're going to need to install D2 coilovers on your E46 BMW. And we'd like to take a second to thank our wonderful sponsors TMI Racing and a big shout out to Vina B Salon for making this episode happen. And with that being said, we'll catch you on the next one.